right. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mylon Star Podcast. Uh, today, another great week with another great um, guest on today. This is Forrest. This guy has probably done it all in the haunt community. This guy <laughs> is, if you, you might most notably recognize him as actually one of the faces of Paranormal Inc. Um, that is like, if you, if you went through Paranormal Inc., you, you've probably, I'm almost guaranteed you, you've seen him. So, uh, Forrest, how you doing, man? Anthony, I am so excited to be a part of the podcast. I think any time that I can share my love of horror with people who have that same ideal, it's like, it's always a fun time because then we can talk shop. And that's what I love about it. And that's why I love doing this is to find all of us who have a good common uh, love of what we do. Before so I'm we, so excited to be on here. Yeah, before we jump right into like all the all the fun and, and amazing, you know, funny stories and everything, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, your podcast, just to get it out yeah. there a little bit, to promote it a little bit. Um, talk to us a little bit about your new podcast, man. I mean, I've been seeing, I've been listening to the episodes, great episodes. Talk to us about it. So, uh, so it's a so it's called Coming and Other Stuff You Should Know. Um, so. In addition to being a haunter, I think one of the things that I am very passionate about is sexual positivity. So if you are under the age of 18, I mean, I would recommend listening to it with an adult or someone you trust who is over the age of 18. Um, the idea is to take, is to basically take away the taboo of talking about sex because it's something that is daily within our lives. And um, so far we've had some really good people on the show, ranging from people who are on OnlyFans to people who have done adult entertainment. And it is a fun time and it's, it's a lighthearted conversation. Um, and so far, We've had at least about maybe three to five people from about 76 different countries have listened to it. Nice. Um, granted, there have been more, but um, a minimum, which has been nice for us to start. And right. it's just been a, a whirlwind of fun. And uh, we've been getting some really good feedback on it so far. So I, I love uh, listening. I love listening to everyone's feedback on the show and tell me how much they like it. I, I you know what? I, you can add me on to one of the, the positive feedback because I, yeah. I listen to it while I'm at a... <laughs> I throw my headphones on at work. I listen to it. Uh, helps me get by the day. One of the many podcasts I listen to throughout my day. So, um, I mean, you do what you got to do. And especially like if you find something that is probably a subject you you might have not really have experienced before, right. um, especially with like with sexual positivity, that's like a completely unique subject that we're starting to really embrace a little bit more. So to be a part of that, I think is a really awesome move to have. So I really enjoy it. Right, and for anyone who wants to give it a listen, where can they find it at? Uh, where is it? Is it streaming on like Spotify and all that? Well, uh, <laughs> so glad you asked. Um, we're actually available on Spotify, Apple iTunes, SoundCloud, and Deezer. Nice. So I'm very excited. We have one distributor that produces to all of it. Actually, I think pretty soon we might be on iHeartRadio. So keeping nice. the fingers crossed that that can come out pretty soon. So I'm very excited. So go give it a listen. I'll throw the link down in the description so everyone can go check it out and listen to it. I guarantee you're going to have a great time and mm -hmm. I, you're going to have it might be a mix of emotions for some people. So I mean just go give it a listen. Yeah. So Absolutely. Um, let's talk about let's talk about your production company, man, because I know that yeah. this is another project that you're very passionate about. Talk to us a little bit about your pr production company that you have up. Okay, so I operate a, an immersive theater group based in Orange County, Orange Orange County, California called Cardiac Productions. So we produce immersive site specific immersive experiences mainly within or horror. Um, it actually started off as a project I was given at work where I was challenged to create a company that spoke to the things that I love the most. Um, and funny enough, it was something that I just like threw together in my head, like heading into work, realizing like, oh, dang, I totally forgot to do this, where I wanted to create somewhere that people who have love for haunt, immersive theater, um, any type of the arts can have a place to go to be able to utilize and create and hone their craft. Exactly. Right. And that's where Cardiac Production started. And in the middle of all of that, um, did I realize that that was kind of the spark that started everything. And I had an idea for a show that was going to be in the round. So the audience would be around the stage right. and we were going to adapt a Black Mirror episode called Playtest. And we were going to do it at Midsummer Scream. Um, but since then, it has now merged to do a few different things. Our very first show was Midnight, uh, which we took six people and for about a good hour um, had them walk around a 
completely pitch black two-story house oh. um, trying to avoid the Midnight Man, who is, it is an urban legend. And the, I, and it's a, it was basically, it was a pagan tradition or ritual where if you uh, angered the gods, you would um, basically have to play this game where you would light a candle. And if you stopped moving at any time where your candle went out, you could potentially meet the Midnight Man who would then basically rip you open and steal your um, your organs. So that was our very first experience. We did it in Santa Ana um, in, a, in a house in an Airbnb. Uh, we did another one called Game Night, which was um, like a fun friend get together that had a game night that was hijacked by some crazy maniac and you had to play through his weird psychotic versions of games, which was really fun. And we had a really good... Um, we had a really good uh, uh, feedback on it. But during the pandemic, uh, I got tasked with creating something that was going to be unique. And that was where the challenge came. So the challenge was it's a two person experience. Uh, actually, it's a one person, one audience member experience with two actors. And you were part, you had to do the challenge. And if you didn't, then the person on the other side, the actor that you were talking with, has a lot of information that they could use against you. And it paints a whole picture and a whole story. And um, so we actually just, uh, on Black Friday of 2020, we made it, a, we announced that um, instead of just doing set show dates, that you as the audience can actually reach out to us in the shadows which is part of our lore right. is that um, we're in the darkness and the shadows and you could reach into the shadows, contact us and submit yourself into the challenge. And we would set up the dates or mm. if you wanted to, as a birthday gift, you could actually pay for someone to go through it and we would work out all the details and all that other stuff. And, um, in addition to all of that, we also do a lot of really fun stuff. Um, we've been retooling our Instagram page to tell a little bit more of our lore. Um, right. And we teach a lot. We have a lot of um, workshops that are tailored to haunters mm. who want to scare and don't really know where to start or kind of how to perfect the art of scaring. Because just like anything, like with color, with theater, it has a theory. And so that's kind of something that I have been rolling out. We actually were scheduled to do three, uh, three conventions in 2020. Unfortunately, we only got to do one and it was at Hauntex. So that was actually the very first time we got to showcase the workshops to the world. And we're hoping, hoping that this year or in 2022, we'll be able to expand that out and to actually teach this to others and haunts can reach out to us and, um, be able to learn from what we have right now i'm on board i i love everything i heard i mean those those mm -hmm. those experiences where you where you include the audience and everything i think that's what's mm -hmm. always been one of my favorites i love interaction i love doing that kind of stuff um i think that's the like the first year i ever went to hayride that's why i was just like such a little kid there because you were talking to everyone getting all excited mm -hmm. and stuff so i like i love all that and and to, to throw in the horror theme on it on top of that is so cool um yeah and i cannot wait till uh when this when this clears up that we can we can go back so that one that you were working on currently is that still on the back burner is that still something that's going to happen in the future in terms of the workshops or the challenge the challenge you referred so the challenge did actually open we okay. opened in august so we actually did two runs of it um the the first one definitely was the bigger one we were very excited for um but you can but now you are still able to reach out to us right. get a hold of us at cardiacproductions.com slash the challenge all one word uh, and communicate with us and say hey i want to do the challenge what do i got to do and um, actually make that happen that sounds awesome man and yeah obviously, absolutely obviously i know uh I know you, I know everyone, uh, mm -hmm. following the COVID guidelines, obviously a lot of people are always, you know, big on that. And I know what kind of person you are. I know you're on, you're on top of that. So, mm -hmm. um, that's nothing to worry about. You'll be safe doing this experience, um, yeah. and have a fun time. So, yeah. And that's, that's what I think people liked about the challenge. The, the those people who got to experience it. Right. Even though it was in a sit situation like this one, where we're talking through zoom, mm -hmm. they still got creeped out. Right. That was the point is I wanted to be able to still freak you out, even though you were sitting in your own apartment and that was it. 
right? Just through a computer screen. Like the fact that we were able to accomplish that and we had people from New York, we had people from Texas, we had someone all the way in Norway wow. experience it. So like that alone told me that what we were doing was actually pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. And not many groups were doing that. Mm. And so for me to be a part of that tiny little group who were utilizing platforms like zoom right. to still freak you out yep. just really meant that we were doing the job that we were intending to and doing a really good job for it no i agree and and, and i think during this time it's always the the kind of the hardest decision of how to stay in a creative uh, form to you know keep everyone mm -hmm. entertained and everything and i think you from what you're telling me you nailed it and people were reacting to it the way you wanted it probably even better so yeah i mean it sounds like you you did a great job and, and you kind of are, are, are finding a formula for if, 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 if something like this were to come up again, you kind of have a formula down of how you're going to do things in the future, which is always good to have because I don't th I think mm -hmm. a lot of people struggle with a plan like that these days of how, how in, having to stay creative while kind of being stuck at home. So you obviously yeah. have that formula down where you can get the job done and still make people feel creeped out in their own comfort zone, which I think is great. Yeah. And I think, I honestly think too, that, you know, especially as haunters and you've, you've seen it is that when you're walking through a maze or you're walking through a scare zone or anything like that, it's all about being in people's faces. Right. And I will agree. I'm one of those people who definitely does when I scare tend to get in people's faces. But the challenge for me sometimes is, can I do it? Can I still scare you without having to get into your face? Right. And that is when you can tell that someone is doing their job right. There was a point, a few, actually the year that Paranormal Inc. opened, we finished on a Saturday. So the next night, which was Dia de los Muertos, uh, Queen Mary was still running. So right. I got to go to Queen Mary for the very first time, walked through their mazes, had never been in. And there was one particular moment where I was walking through, I forget the name of the maze, um, where there was one person off in this corner in the dark just on the floor like twitching like how you would normally see like wow. people yeah type of thing and it still freaked me out so when you can do that and know and it, you and especially when you know your surroundings really well right. and you know what's going to work and what's not going to work you can do some creepy creepy stuff and it's yeah. and that's what i love about it i mean i get i get uncomfortable just watching like They've made horror films that take place like Unfriended, and I've seen other fan films that people made, independent films that people have made through using Zoom, and I even get creeped out watching those films because it's like, you know, I'm using Zoom all the time for the podcast mm -hmm. and to, to make videos and stuff, so just to have that thought in your head, it's like, oh, someone can glitch in at any point and just kind of run the show is just a scary thought mm -hmm. in, my, in my mind, so... Yeah, and I, that's what I love about it. So I'm glad that I was able to make that happen. And hopefully this isn't the last time that we do this. And hopefully we can create something even cooler to where we can live stream it in, in, you know, to thousands of people and have the audience participate in that. And that was actually something we were going to try to do for this last Halloween. Right. It just didn't work out and we had a shorter timeline. And so eventually... That is something I like to be able to do is to do a massive live stream Halloween show that people can pay the money and everyone can get a chance to see it and um, eventually let them choose what happens in the experience, which I think is something that we that we just got to work it out and hopefully it works out really, really well. No, yeah. And, and you know what? I could say on behalf of my entire team, I mean, we support that, man. We we, we, we will be there and we will, whatever we can do to help out, man. I, I want to see more of this. Love it. And Yay, I'm excited. Especially live streams like that, dude. I think when you when you, when you you reach out to a, a global audience or even more, people are going to invest and then really take a look at this. I think the it, within the last like uh, 10 to 15 years, people – have a tendency of just loving to get scared um mm -hmm. and i i think the the horror genre has blown up more than ever to this day uh you know when you when a new horror movie comes out it, it probably had a budget of like five million dollars because they usually shoot them on really low budgets now and freaking it'll go up in the box office make like 200 million dollars and stuff like that so it just shows you how much people really love horror and how much they they'll you know interact with that especially with haunt season this year i mean you know, in 2020, haunt season obviously was a d more difficult year, but people were still trying mm -hmm. to find ways to show up and get scared because they they like that stuff. They 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 love that interaction and everything. So, I, I think 
eventually if you guys can figure out the the works of, of getting it global and stuff and and live streaming i think so many people will tune into that especially with all the advertising I... Oh yeah, absolutely. If you do it right and you give enough time for people to be like, oh, I'm totally down, Let, let's make this happen, right. then you can do just about anything. You just have to be able to find the audience that wants it right. and are, are willing to make it happen and be like, yeah. let's do this, you know? So that's eventually where we'll end up going. I'm excited, man. So I cannot wait. I'm going to keep my eye on this and I hope everyone watching and listening keeps their eye out because they, they're mm -hmm. going to be doing a lot of great stuff. Conventions, when they come back, Hope to see them there, and I cannot wait. Oh, we will. Oh, yeah. my God. So <laughs> I'm going to let you all in on a little secret, a little heads up, a little sneak peek. So we were actually supposed to be at Midsummer Scream, obviously, but we were actually going to be doing an experience. Oh, nice. We were actually going to showcase what we're capable of and uh, kind of – make our mark and make ourselves known. Um, so we were supposed to do, I'll give a little heads up. The experience that we had in mind is called interrogate 5150. Um, that actually gets to, that gives you an opportunity to visit the shadows itself and encounter our guides who are the people who guide you into the experiences and kind of are there to just get you, get you in and get you out. Right. Um, and so there's some really cool, so with that alone, I'm kind of excited to see people's reactions to it because we have a really cool storyline in mind and now it's just kind of like refining it and putting it in front of people. That's kind right. of what we're, our challenge is for now. That sounds, I mean, like, dude, I, I'm, I love Midsummer Scream. So when you add on stuff like that to, to make it an mm -hmm. amazing weekend, especially, uh, of course, with last year announcing it was going to move to like a three day weekend. So it gives people more time to do things like that. And I'm yeah. so stoked. Like I, I will make sure to add that to the agenda of things to do. Cause yeah, I remember 2019, so man, it, it was just a madhouse for us. And it, it's like that every year with panels and everything. Well, I think it's funny. Cause like I, so like what's, what's most people are quick to realize that I happen to just know a, a ton of people and right. my resume, especially with my portfolio of work is so, unique and diverse and so like i've watched midsummer scream from year one until 2019 watch it grow to the point that we've now had we had ready or not premiere in 2019 do a whole experience there you know we have zombie joes every single year we have people from you know we had some we had mike aiello from florida hauling horror nights mm -hmm. showing up like the fact that that is where we are now right. speaks to the power and the love that the community has mm -hmm. to just see everybody and to commend everyone's work. And that's why I love um, being there every, every single year because I get to see everyone I know and also um, get to see what everyone else has been working on, which is really exciting for me. It, it is. Cause honestly, like I'm a, I'm a huge fan of outside of horror. Like I love, comic books i love all that stuff you know so mm -hmm. to me when i when i show up to midsummer scream the way i look at this this is the horror version of comic-con this is like absolutely the place to be in mm -hmm. summer for horror to to see what's coming for all the horror event like showing up to like a horror nights panel to like a knots panel like uh hayride queen mary that's like hall h right there dude we're we're like yep. camping out there to see what they're gonna announce like and yeah it, it's like it's 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 just it's amazing going to this uh, event every year just to see all the all the vendors, the Hall of Shadows, all the panels, to see everyone dress up, to see everyone yeah. who's part of the community like there. Just, you know, because the way I look at the community is this is I, I try to keep the community. I, I like to see the community as like a safe zone, hopefully. And I, I want everyone to be kind of like a family, you know, because, you mm -hmm. know, in the end of the day, I think with a convention like this, let's leave all the bullshit in the world outside of these doors and let's all mm -hmm. just come as a family and, and just celebrate what we love, which is horror <laughs> and haunts. Mm -hmm. So I, I, yeah. I really I really love the, the vibe that I get every time I go to Midsummer Scream every year. Absolutely. It's I amazing, completely agree. Amazing, man. So. Let's talk about your haunt career, man. You've you've been doing it for some time, man. Ta talk to us mm -hmm. about the very beginning, man. I want to hear how it all started. So, okay. So I've kind of, I've mentioned this before, um, but I always love talking about it because I love hearing, pe I love seeing people's reactions when I talk about it. Right. So I started in 2012. Okay. The reason why I started doing it is for one main reason. I had never been to the event, mm. period. Had never been to haunt. Um, I am the type, obviously there's like, so there's always a, a group of people 
you know, you have your millennials, your Gen Zers, and, you know, all those people. I was raised as a season of screams kid okay that's how i grew up i that's how i got my haunt fix was i got to watch the season of screams um i still have the dvd i was able to find it and (laughs) every time i can i try to watch it because for me that is what i grew up on um and i actually was working with someone who who no longer works at haunt but was working haunt streets and i was very fascinated by it and so um 2012 I applied and uh this was around the time so there are some monsters who used to camp out to go in I was not a part of that I was actually part of the very first year that they did an online appointment system so I applied and got a time but I was dumb and I applied for like a 2:30 time slot when there was still like stuff in the AM, but I was like, oh, I could, I could still probably get a, you know, a spot, but you know, <laughs> no big deal. No, I was uh, on call talent, blackout, line control. Nice. So basically on call is when someone quits, right. whatever it is, you take their job. So uh, I was pretty like gung ho about wanting to work hot and just like, do you have a gig? Do you have a gig? What do you got? What do you got? And they would just like hang up the phone. Cause they're like, <laughs> ah, I don't know how to handle with you. Um, but I had auditioned. So like, I'm also a musical theater kid. So right. uh, I went to an audition for Aladdin, the musical spectacular rest in peace. Uh-huh, yes. And uh, basically everyone in my car all got rejected. And on the car ride home, I got a phone call this was on a, I think it was on a, was it on a Monday? I think it was on, I think it was on, actually it was on a Wednesday, I think. Right. Hey, we're from Not Scary Farm. We have, I know you're on call talent. We have a spot open for you. I was like, oh, yeah, perfect. What, what is it? Um, it's Uncle Bobo's Big Top of the Bazaar. You'll be nice. playing a clown. And I was like, okay. And I was like at first going, okay, why would you put me there? <laughs> um, so I, so I, so I was the very last cast of Uncle Bobo's Big Top of the Bazaar in 2020. Um, if you've been through the maze, I played, I was in the trophy room with the incredible thingy with the hoop pants right. and the weird, like three, like red haired, like clown. That was my gig. <laughs> so did that for the last three weeks of haunt. And that was where it started and and kind of went into it and had the time of my life right. um it was really great it was really fun and i was like i could continue doing this um so the next year which was 2013 this was when they would announce the mazes like each month right prior to actual sign up so you would know what was what mazes were opening yeah um compared to how it works now where we sign up and we can't say shit which i'm like ah yeah so um and then they do so that the whole very... announcement ceremony and everything and then finally everybody can say everything <laughs> yeah which i think is kind of it's so very disney of them to do but i'm like god damn it like come on I, we just want to know what it is um <laughs> So the very first maze that got announced for 2013 was in March and it was Forevermore. Nice. And I'm a huge fan of Edgar Allan Poe. I love that maze. I was like, oh my God, I want to do that maze. Yeah. So I applied and I was in the Tar and Feather room, okay. which was the very long room that was like the psychiatric hospital. Right. Um, I was, I was not, I started having a lot of problems because it was a lot of flashing and to be in that room the whole night, I was yeah. like, hell no so there was someone else in another part of the maze it was in the red clock club okay who wanted to be in my room i said can we switch so they said sure no big deal so we switched and i was in the club for the rest of the season and i loved it it was my favorite thing i i got to do some really weird things (laughs) in that maze that i like I could still do and people be like, what is the matter with you? Um, like there was times when I would like hump the chairs. I'd be <laughs> on like top of like the mannequins. Um, I was just like having a ball and it was so much fun, but it was the first time I was also in makeup. So that was like a completely fun experience for me too, to finally get to be in makeup and to do that. And then the year after was, uh, I think it was, was that the first year that they No, it, uh, no, wait. No, it actually, uh, was it? I'm still like trying to remember everything that's happened in my lifetime. 2014, I was a dead twin in the Tooth Fairy. Nice. So I got to do that. 
Um, my favorite part of the whole season was I got to do a lot of the press. Right. So for three of the weeks, I was on Univision. I was on Fox 11 San Diego. I was on KTLA. Um, so that was fun. Having But like having to be up at like three in the morning to be in the maze, like I had just left like two days prior yeah. to go in and be in front of cameras. That was very interesting. But then, of course, we get to 2015, which is like the highlight of my entire goddamn career. Um, and that was me playing um, Barry from Paranormal Inc. Yes. So that was fun. That was a little different um, because for the first time I was playing, like granted, like Tooth Fairy, like, you know, I had a presence because I'd been on the press and I was made it a point to kind of just be everywhere. But this was the first time that I actually got to be the lead character of a maze. And I was like, right. that's pretty fun. Yeah. So, and that was a unique experience to do too, because, you know, it's getting to the, establish a character yeah. and do, and be a part of that the whole time. And then filming stuff for it was completely different. Yeah. And then on top of that, getting to do a stunt was also like a new thing I got to do. So that was I, like, the whole thing was super fun for me. That was the first time I ever saw you. And then I got to know you a little bit more when you did some work with TLV, I think back in like 2018, 2017. Yeah, we, I, it was, I mean, TL, TLV has been super great. They've been, they're awesome guys. And right. um, so to be like a part of that, of like knowing them and kind of having a good working relationship with them has been really well. Like we right. spent, um, was it couple, was it 2019 that they did? No, wait, no, it was 2018. 2018 was uh, Warner, Warner Brothers. Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. So I ended up going, I vlogged a little for myself and then got to walk, hang out with them because I was kind of by myself. I couldn't really <laughs> do much. So that was a pretty good, fun experience for me to, to hang out with them and to get to know them a little bit more. Yeah. And then you guys did that whole... Uh... I love the friends intro that you guys did. That was great. Yeah, I wasn't expecting for them to be to like let me in there, but yeah. now I'm just there. <laughs> now I'm you're officially, part of the I'm a, unof I'm officially unofficially a part of TLEV guys. You have no <laughs> idea. I'm just the accountant. It's fine. <laughs> but Shows it's, up every but now it's really and then. fun. He's good, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm here every so there. often. Yeah. You know, no big deal. No big deal. No. That, so yeah. So Paranormal was the first time I ever saw you, and then mm -hmm. um, obviously with TLEV. I got to see you a little bit more and got to know you a little bit. And then every time mm -hmm. I went to the maze after Paranormal, I'm like, oh, look, it's Forrest. Like, I'd say it all loud. <laughs> and then everybody mm -hmm. looks at me like, who are you talking about? Be like, yeah, yeah. it's not at my level, bro. Well, it's funny, too, because, like, so when I moved on to streets, you know, we get a day off. So I always would make a point to, like, I'd buy my Fright Lane and I'd do the buffet because, you know, that's, like, a part of the whole experience. Right. And then just walk to the maze and be like – that's me <laughs> and i and, and then i'd have other people who i'm i know and i'm hanging out with who would then point my cameras going who is that i'm like oh god i will never live that down so i'm like super proud that that is a job that someone like it was john cook like when i yeah. went in uh, actually so fun story is when i went to go kind of uh, what was it? it was like right after tooth fairy daniel miller had been like usually daniel miller's like helping like okay what do you want to do what are you interested in and kind of guide you where you need to go and he was my cast lead for tooth fairy and he he walks i, I kind of knew where i was gonna go because fun fact if you know people who work knots mm -hmm. um you kind of can get away with finding out what some of the mazes are or what's happening and so like i had already known that john was doing a maze it was like a paranormal ghosty thing i didn't know anything more than that but like that was where i wanted to go because i'd seen how awesome infected was i was like i'd love to see what a maze from john cook looks like right so i walk up to daniel miller i'm like hey daniel how are you doing he goes oh, i'm doing really good no big deal so um <laughs> do you want to like go for streets kind of like pushing me in that direction? Cause he knew I could do it. And I was like, no, I kind of already know where I want to go. And John had been talking to pasta who kind of is our manager. And they kind of both looked at me going, wait a minute. I know where he's going. And he goes, Hey, I have a, I have a role for you. And I was like, uh, uh, well, tell me more about it. Like, I kind of want to like, that's what I like knowing what I'm getting myself into. And he goes, well, it's a stunt spot. Have you heard of stunts? No, basically full body harness. You're just going to look like a demon's pulling you up and Ooh. that's what you're going to do. I said, Ooh, that sounds like fun. I want to do that. Okay, cool. So um, this is where you're going to go, go to this table. They'll get you the role. And then um, 
and then just let come back to me as soon as you get as soon as you're confirmed and you're you're good to go. Right. So that all happens. He goes, "Hey, well, can you be back on Sunday for a photo shoot?" I did not realize like that kind of was the point of like, "Oh my god, like this is a huge like deal." <laughs> right. And I was like, "Oh my god, like oh my god, this is crazy." And it was kind of like week after week I was finding out like we need you for this vo- video shoot. We need you um, to be here for the media preview. And that was crazy to me to realize that like, this is a huge deal. And like, yeah. this is the character to the point where my cast leads at the end of the season was like, you're Barry. So we can't really like not tell you, you did a bad job because you created the character. So we can't really like critique you on anything, but you know what you were doing and you're good at what you do. So I'm like, <laughs> I mean, duh, professional, (laughs) but you know, (laughs) but you know, it's, it's, but that I have a huge pride in my heart for Barry and actually my very first Jersey, my baseball Jersey from camp has my haunt name or it has the name Barry. And because John Cook used to scare at camp was a cast lead for camp. I made a point as soon as I got it to turn around, go look. And it says Barry and he goes, Oh my God, that's so cool. And it's like, you know, I had, I have to pass it on yeah. because without, without John Cook and without Paranormal Inc., I would not have gotten to do such a fun role. Man, so we, uh, that was pretty cool. We here at the Knights of Horror, we love John Cook. We actually even created, yes. we created him a shirt, uh, which I'm going to be <laughs> posting on our, on our new uh, shop uh, entitled Ooh. The Cookbook. So every time we find a, 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 a scare or a maze that we know he did or he was involved with, we say that's part of the cookbook right there, man. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, to, but also to think too, that like how big he got, like right after, like even just like after Paranormal Inc that he has his own production company and there's yep. people in like Malaysia, there's people all over the world who are paying him for his art. Like yeah. that's amazing to me. And I'm like, oh my God, so good. So I'm, I'm glad that like, there's a good working relationship there with him. Yeah, so that's no, pretty good. Me too. I, I love seeing what that guy's going to do next, um, especially when he – I remember that one year in 2019 at Midsummer Screen. I think I saw him at just about every panel except for Horror Nights. And I'm like, yeah, give it some time. He'll take on Horror Nights. I, I honestly I'm – ve- I'm very – like you will find out i'm very um, opinionated when it comes to haunts right. seeing as i've been doing it for so long that i'm so attuned to one thing right. that like horror nights in particular uh, as much as i will give them credit for creating some almost like near perfect mazes right they have a lot of work to do to the point that like you know you're doing bad when knots is like kicking your ass yep. like on maze designs especially because like black walls is like i it gets under my skin and it's one of the things that i it's my huge critique on yep. as well as the scare is like not allowing the monsters or actors to the freedom that they deserve you know there's obviously some things you can and can't do like imagine michael myers he doesn't talk mm-hmm. don't talk mm-hmm. like as, as long as you do that or you move this kind of way let them do what they need to like yeah. I, it kind of bothers me when I see these like push like these guitar pedal lights and sounds. It just gets yeah. old and it gets repetitive. And I'm like, and I'm tired of it. And it's boring. And yep. just it's like we could you can do better than that, especially because you have a budget. It's it's funny that you bring up the black walls because I think the one year they brought in us for 2019, uh, Sammy and I's biggest joke was we're tired of black walls. We want to see white walls. Um, and ironically, and they, there they are. Ironically enough, when you walk through some of the scenes of us, there's white walls everywhere, and me and Sammy were cheering everywhere. The characters and the, and the people are <laughs> like, what, "What are these guys cheering about?" I'm like, "You just you don't understand. You got to be there. <laughs> you don't. You're yeah. not in the community. You yep. don't understand. You don't understand. <laughs> we finally got a change of scenery, but no, mm-hmm. I, I I really uh, I, I really love your role in Paranormal, dude. I I like I said, every time I go in, I call it out now. And Sammy and I are probably probably not the only ones who who actually do call it out. Um, and everybody looks <laughs> at us like we're crazy, but it's like, yeah, you know, this guy, mm-hmm. this guy, man, he he started a revolution right here for this maze. Come on, yeah, man. it would it wouldn't have been happening if it wasn't for me. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I love the work you guys do. At, at, so what do you, what? Let's go on for uh, since we're doing year by year, 2016. Uh, you return, obviously, this maze is huge. This maze mm-hmm. really got a lot of uh, public eye. Every time I go to the event, it's one of the most packed mazes there. 
What happens in 2016 with you now, man? Well, uh, I heard talk that there is a new scare zone coming to Camp Snoopy. Yeah. And I had caught wind of what the theme was um, originally. So I had been hearing that there was rumor that they were going to bring back the gauntlet. Right. So another little secret was if the gauntlet had come back, I actually had a character I was going to pitch mm -hmm. to the team. And it would have been the first time I genuinely played an actual female. And the character I had in mind, her name was Safala, the queen of the Vikings. Nice. And she basically, her character was supposed to be, um, she hates men, hated every single man. Um, she had two lackeys who were guys who basically acted like dog, like, like, like guard dogs for her. And she, the only guy that she ever that was either on her level or above her was Thor. That's what she was. That's what she like. That was like her dream date or dream mate. And the, so one of the major things was that like, obviously body would have been showing a little bit, but you know, you have to be very careful with what you do at knots and right. a lot of weird things. But the biggest piece that would have stood out was um, she would have worn a cape that had pelts of skin mm. from every basically every guy that was worthy enough to be killed by her and so she she would have had like a pelt of skin with like an ear on it or like you know or like a mouth and it would just like cool. flowed and sh that would have been her right. instead we got the hollow and so i um so i tried to figure out exactly how i was going to pitch that idea <laughs> and so originally it was going to be a brother and sister kind of deal. Right. So I would have been the sister and someone else would have been the brother. And I, so when I went into audition, uh, I had this idea saying it would have been a brother and sister kind of pitched it. And um, Dieterman or Scott Dieterman, who at the time was running ghost town. It was his last season mm -hmm. cast leading it. Uh, he goes, Hey, can you try to do like, uh, or so they gave me the, they gave it to me. Cause they're like, we love that you're doing these three sixties. You're not just like facing us. Like you're going around and using the space that we give you and you have different levels. So go about it. Like, as, as if there's two souls in the one body. And that's kind of what I did. And it didn't really translate that well. Right. So then, so 2016 happens, 2017, I go back into camp and became and then kind of became like the shaman scarecrow and that was the character that i loved playing it was one of my favorite characters and it's a character that i would love to play again because i think right. it was a fun character and um i don't know if you've ever seen it or if anybody who is listening to this had seen the seen it the character was walking around with a staff that everyone like loved but people missed a really awesome effect that it had right. because we had such a lot of problems with it that it actually the story was is that it was an actual shaman who sees the three witches of the of the the scare zone right. loves what they're doing and says i will give myself to you to kind of be like the protector of all of the scarecrows and because they are honored or like respect the shaman they give him some of their magic and it lives in the staff and the staff lit up like it <laughs> glowed red and it oh, looked awesome that sounds dope and we kept missing it and it just wasn't working and i was so mad because it was like think of how fucking cool this would have yep. been if it was able to work and it worked a couple times where people were able to see it mm -hmm. but they just it just never lasted and i was like Mm -hmm. It would have yeah. been so good. Um, so two years in camp, 20, 2016, 20, no, 2016, 2017, 2018, I got moved over to Boardwalk. Nice. Uh, so kind of like a full circle moment from scaring at Bobo's to now being on the Boardwalk streets, which is yeah. massive. Yeah. It's huge, like second to ghost town. I would say, honestly, Boardwalk is probably the hardest to scare out of because of how much light and, and lit it is. So you have to be really creative with it. You can. I and the, I, I do I do agree on that sentiment. And I right. think that it, you are more, you're stronger of a monster if you can scare in light. Right. Because it's even tougher because they can yeah. see you. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, so that was a fun challenge to me. Uh, and then um, due to some unfortunate circumstances, uh, 2019, I had to go back into a maze. Okay. Um, but knowing me and knowing that I will try to get my way every so much possible, <laughs> uh, I ended up going back to another John Cook maze and I opened Origins, oh. the, haunt, the Curse of Calico. And that is where, and that was, that was where I was for that 2019 beautiful beautiful who did you what did you do in origins because I, I i love that so, maze so much so if you remember if you uh so the way that the, the maze worked is the experience starts once you walk through boot hill cemetery right because there's characters all over the place yeah kind of filling you in on exactly what's happening that sarah marshall's getting hung and then you're waiting outside of town hall and there's the gallows yeah. The second you walk through the town hall, it was, if it was not me scaring you through the door, it was someone else. Right. Uh, but I was in that very first room. I had a hat on. That was like the quickest way for people to recognize me as well as um, I was jumping left, right, and center through that damn room. Um, there was like an L like shaped, like rise, right. like, or like shelving thing. Right. My fat ass was jumping over that goddamn thing the whole time i was in that room we were in scare school and pasta our manager as she as she kind of what's really cool about scare school is she'll walk around and she'll have art because she's been in there for so long right. she'll know kind of some good places to scare and offer feedback which is great she was sitting there and she goes you know you all can jump on this right and i was like why would you tell me that because now i'm <laughs> going to so i was like on top of it i would like i like like a running like olympic runner like hurtling over that thing <laughs> and that was to prove that like a box can't I, it's hard to put me in a box mind it's you, really hard mind you for anyone who's listening or watching that room is not there's not a lot of room in there so what he's saying, there is not i mean it's literally room for like the actors to scare people to walk through and there's stuff in between so what everything he's saying like it shocks me of how he how he pulled it off man because that is just mm -hmm. the funniest thing to hear well the other thing too, and this is a lesson that I tell a lot of people, especially within, even within the first workshop I had, it's important to know who's in the room with you. And the reason why is once you know the people and the way that they scare and the, like it's, it be, you develop a shorthand. Mm -hmm. So I was really fortunate. There was three of us in that room, but there was literally only two people on that floor. The, the third person was, the, yeah, was the judge. Yeah. But the best part is all three of us knew how to work that room. Right. The other RB cast, like I love them. They could not run that room like we could run that room because me and my ghost town ghoul, um, Jazzy, we just ran in circles and we just like, we knew when to scare. Right. She would see me go one direction. She goes, I'm gonna go this way. And we would just go. And that was what makes a maze really well. Like Tooth Fairy. Yeah. The reason why Tooth Fairy worked for me is granted, I was only supposed to be in one room, which was the the letter room. Right. It's um, it's it's two rooms after the, the black furry room. Yeah. But instead, it just came turned into me using that room and the room before it, like right as you come out of that blacked out hallway. And just me and my twin just knew what to do yeah. and to make it work. And that's what I think makes a room work is yeah. when you have people who are on the same wavelength as you and know exactly when to when to scare or when to get the hell out of your way. Yeah. Cause you know, cause they know your big ass is gonna like <laughs> trawl through there. And we just we know what to do. And that's great. Yeah, the chemistry, I think, works perfect there, especially when there's a lot of communication going on as far as, mm -hmm. all right, this is what's the plan for, what's the plan? You know, we communicate, okay, you go this way, I go that way. And like you mm -hmm. said, you guys run in a circle, you guys learned how each other scared, and you guys just ran, you ran with it, and it worked. The chemistry yeah. was perfect. And you I know what? It. I went in that maze so many times, when the right when the park would open, that would be like one of the first mazes we go to. I was, I mean, throughout the night, I mean, I think we went in that maze a few times. So I've, I've probably seen you. And I think I was just so, I think every time me and Sammy went in it, it was just such a, like a beautiful thing to look at. It was like a piece of art. You were like mm -hmm. stepping in it's, a piece of it's art. It's great. Yeah. I like, so like when they told it, so obviously like, because we don't know exactly what's happening or what the idea is, right. we don't see that maze until like scare school. Like yeah. we legitimately don't get to see it until we're actually having to, <laughs> have fun and walk through it and so we got to walk through it and oh my god it was amazing and yep. to and to even see the concept sketches like the, even the reveal has yeah. gotten 
the production quality is so great that like even seeing the concept sketches that John and his team came up with was like, oh my God, then to walk in it was like a completely different story. Right. But what made also made that maze super interesting was for the first time, and I, for me at least, because the last three years I've been on streets, so the maze training has changed and morphed and modified mm -hmm. to the point where they gave us like sheets here's the character, here's who you are, um, here's the things you can say, and here's, and here's what you can do with it. So taking that and figuring out, okay, how do I put that and put my own flair into it and spin um, allowed me to really do some cool things that I haven't done before. And I will say, I will full heartedly admit, I am a flirt, especially in character. It has happened all the time. One of the things that I Googled was, were there gays in the old west right. because obviously as a gay man it's important to know the history of it and sure enough there were so i certain times of the night if i was just bored i would walk around and i would look at all the guys and I'd go mm, you look like a full calico meal and just, mm, and just like hit on people because those types of people existed yeah so it's it was fun to add a little bit of that character to it and be like and just like hit on people and like just like get all up in it and it was fun for me and i was like here for it and so that was that was just what made so much more fun for me but also i kind of became like the grand not the grandpa but i definitely look like mama bear right. for everyone else in the maze because i had been there for so long granted i'm not not like some of the other people who i think there was only two other people who had been in who had who had been for haunt longer than i had right but it was like fun to still kind of almost have everyone kind of be like hey i need help with this what do you got like can you help me out because that's what i should be doing right you know it's you know, helping the newer generation out and educate them on what things you should do. But when they act a fool, remind them that they act in a fool yep. and kind of give them a little bit of tough love because that's what they need. They Put have to, place, man. especially, oh, oh yeah. And I had to at one point. Um, so there's a very famous nickname that if you get this nickname, it is bad, um, means you are messing up and it's called a chud. So if you ever get called a chud, just know that no one likes you Ooh. you messing up Jeez. and someone so and uh, and so um one of our catawampuses um there's two in in there's two in each cast one of which who was brand new to haunt had the balls to tell basically everyone else mainly the other catawampuses but some of us felt a little attacked basically saying that nobody works harder than me because I still have to wear this even during my break. And, you know, I'm amazing. And I gave him his hot name. His hot name is OD, short for overdramatic, because he acted like a little bitch. Oh, I agree. And on the very last night, he goes, well, I'm never, you know, because uh, we also have another tradition. If it's your first year, you get a red hat from Knots because you pop your cherry and people right. pop you in the head. He got it, or he was getting his hat. He goes, if anyone bops me on the head, I know karate. I'm going to take you down. I said, okay, Chud, relax, sit down. Just get the, it's a, it's a tradition. It's not that, it's not that serious. Relax. Does this guy think he's and part of Cobra Kai or something or what's going on? I am. <laughs> well, he, well, it's like those, it's those like newborns who are like, I'm at haunt. I'm scary. I'm amazing. No, bitch. There's people who've been here longer than you. Take a seat and learn from the rest of us. Yep. And there are few that I have encountered that, and we can get to one in a, another second, uh, who, who just, I, who just, get in there who get all in their head for no reason it's right. like dude we're just here to scare yeah there's nothing special about you sorry but and i hate that that's the narrative that we're pushing but unfortunately you're not special you are literally a person in a costume mm -hmm. provided to you by a theme park and your job is just to scare people mm -hmm. people are not going to remember unless they're like unless you're like an AP or like a, you know, you have the, the pass and people see you often and they just recognize, remember you, right. no one else is going to remember who the fuck you are. Yep. The only person like probably argumentably would be Elvira. She's the only person from haunt that would ever be remembered period. But even then people do not, some people don't remember that she came from haunt and that's how she rose up in the world. Yep. So it kind of bothers me when there are people who are all in their head 
because you have to remind them everyone started at this point you're not special yeah sorry 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 yeah i think that's the same it goes the same thing for our channel is i never take anything for granted and i never mm -hmm. i remember where i came from and i still remember where i am you know mm -hmm. i grew up in Norwalk, california dude as i like mm -hmm. i can tell you down the street from me i can show you all the gangs and everything I know everything, all that, you know? So it's like, even if I get a little success, I don't let it get to my head because it's like, I'm doing mm -hmm. this because I enjoy doing this. I love talking to people. I love making yeah. horror content. Like, and if mm -hmm. you see me on, like, I'm going to be cool because, like, I'm, a, I'm just a genuinely cool guy. And I I still, now, and this is something I want to talk to you about too. Do you ever, because yeah. people probably recognize you a lot now. Mm -hmm. because a little bit here and there. Do you ever feel like that that kind of like because I still feel this like when someone comes up to me and, and notices me like I don't I get shocked and I don't know what to say because I'm just not used to doing any of that. Does that you ever feel that way? Um, I so another little bit tidbit is that I just happen to be someone that people recognize and I've been pretty lucky. So uh, like if anybody remembers FBE on YouTube and how problematic that was, I happened to know a bunch of the people who were involved in that show right. um for a short while i knew like i was pretty close with drake bell to the point where there were people on an instagram page who posted a photo of drake bell but they picked up that i was there in the photo first and they go i re i recognized forrest before i realized who he was standing next to <laughs> so i'm used to the fact that people are going to recognize me and that's right. okay I've had people, especially because like I had a YouTube, I have a YouTube channel right. that centers around horror and I have a vlog series called the haunt vlog mm -hmm. that is tailored to how to be a haunt monster from the eyes of someone doing it. Right. And I have, and I had people from haunt come up and go, Hey, just want to let you know, I love your channel. Oh my God. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. Right. And that's amazing to me. And that's something that it, it's just, it's pride. Yeah. People are going to recognize you, especially if you do something that people are going to recognize. So I, it's I'm not so much as like, a, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, I'm just, ex I'm extremely thankful for it. It's just, I'm still not yeah. used to it. I just gotta, I gotta still break that barrier. Cause I'm just, again, I'm just this, this kid who one day decided to pick up a camera and talk about Halloween Horror Nights and then eventually expanded his horizon and never mm -hmm. thought in a million years I'd be where I'm at right now. Yeah. And I've been so lucky, like, honestly, like it, it go back, going back to paranormal, had I not been in Paranormal Inc., right. I would not have been able to do some of the things that I do now. Right. So um, I've been so because of Paranormal Inc., I connected with someone named Jeff Heimbuck, who runs a show called Return Home. And he said, I have a role for you. And because of that, I've now been a part of this show. Because of me being on the show, I won a Parsec Award for my role in the show. Nice. Because of that, I also got tapped by same person to be a part of another audio drama for iHeartRadio with Ben DeLaCreme from RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, nice. And because of all of that, I was able to do the live shows for Return Home at Midsummer Scream. And because of that, I was able to help produce a panel for Midsummer Scream. And because of all of that, I was able to then start my own production company and had good working relationships with people that were able to come in and review it and help it out. So it, you know, it's just, it's, you have to be humble in what you do. Mm -hmm. And you have to be thankful that you are lucky that people have something that they, love right. and just be really prideful about that and it bothers me that there's people who get so uppity and are like too important for the fans i'm like don't forget where you came from yeah. do not forget that you know and that's something important to me and and realize that you know uh, and it's kind of a dark thing to say but like i have some very strong relationships with people who could make or break someone's career right. without a doubt and someone tried that someone tested it and unfortunately um they were a part of a very um problematic event that was supposed to happen this year um <coughs> welcome to hellfest um and they learned very quick on that story man <laughs> well so so i'm gonna call out this person mainly because it's called accountability um johnny espino i think is his name um you already giggled knowing who I'm about, like knowing damn well who that is. And the problem is, is like, he doesn't realize that like he tried. So fun story again, I'm so connected. Not only do I know TLEV, I used to work with John Casco of the hotline 
I love John, by the way. Shout out to uh, John. John's great. Shout out to John's John. great. Great guy. So who does John Casco text when John Esposino emails him out of nowhere saying, hey, you should interview me for the hotline? Who does he text? I think he's going straight to you, man. Hell yeah, he is. And he goes, hey, do you know this person? I said, yeah, don't talk to him. And he goes, yeah, I got kind of got that vibe, but because he's hot, I figured he might know who you are. Mom's like, yep, oh, yes, he does. And tries to flout the numbers. Do you know how bad that is? Yeah. Do you know how, how like, power hungry you have to seem to try to flout your 3,000 subscriber YouTube channel to me? That's bad. I'm sorry. I don't. Uh... It's bad. Because yeah. good luck getting talked to by TLEV. Good luck getting talked to by Hotline. Also, don't know if you know this. There's a rule. Whatever you wear at Not Scary Farm belongs yeah. to Knots. Yep. Belongs to them. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine to, I'm going to assume Knots is surprise, when John Esposino began promoting a shirt that he was selling of a character that belongs to Knots. Mm hmm so seen it all yeah i'm just saying I, like i love know. uh this is one thing i love about you is how honest you are man and uh, you know you don't get very many people in this world like that anymore you have to be yeah. you have especially in the haunt community what it makes me really sad and i hate to have to throw people under the bus because i love this community mm -hmm. but because i love this community it is our job to hold people accountable and unfortunately Definitely. there are people in our community who have crossed lines. Mm -hmm. They have done very shady shit. So there are some people in our community who have decided that, oh, I'm in the haunt community, I can do whatever. I'm sorry, hitting on minors is not, especially in the haunt community, never gonna fly. Yeah. Sexually assaulting someone, guess what? Not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. McCain Manor, fuck them. Fuck them, we don't, we don't, we don't they're in, use them. They're in Tennessee. <laughs> they're in Tennessee because the community ran them out of town. Yeah. At, rightfully so. There are some people who still even show up to Midsummer Scream with haunts who have now been have been an, like have been called out for sexual allegations. And it bothers me that they are still allowed to have those platforms where they shouldn't have them anymore. Right. And it so even if sexual assault allegations wise or being a complete dick, either way, you should be called out for your atrocious behavior because we are community. We are strong. We deal in dark. We deal in death. Yep. So for you to come in and try to tell me of all people that I ain't shit because I have, I have under 3000, 3000 YouTube subscribers, get the fuck out of here. Know, and and if that wasn't enough decides to then play victim and film a video saying well not did it did it this and not did it did that i'm sorry isn't there a vlog on your channel saying you almost got kicked out yeah no, i was there that night too man i, I saw mm -hmm. yeah I, I remember i yeah i just I and he was that. laughed at all of the monsters and the talent of scary farm when that video went out started laughing at him yeah royalty but... he ain't shit sorry i like no, you can good. tell that you can tell that i love my community and, no, and i see that fun. passion yeah it's super important and you know yeah. and because of this haunt community did i get to build haunts at a completely different theme park for specific employees only right that's something that not many people will get to have granted i'm not the first one to do it but I got to create some cool stuff at a completely different theme park down the street, actually about 20 minutes walking distance from where I'm at now right. that will never be seen by the general public. That's so cool. man. You know, it's, and it's such a weird, and you know, and I take pride in that. Yeah. I'm blessed and lucky that that is what I get to do. Right. So, you know, for someone who gets to create an event and create a character who is copyright infringing on someone, just like i'm like it's gotten to the point where i just don't care anymore but i if i need to call it out i will call it out no, and that's yeah. and I, that's and super, I respect, super important and I, and I and i respect that so much um i mm -hmm. see it i see it all the time on your instagram when you're calling someone out like it's just mm -hmm. he he's not calling you out because he's calling you out because a lot of the shit you're probably saying is bullshit and a lot of the stuff mm -hmm. that you absolutely need to be called out on 
You know, he doesn't just go. Absolutely. He doesn't just go and search Instagram and be like, I feel like calling that person out. It's like, no, he calls you out because yeah. you deserve to be called out. Uh, Absolutely. So Absolutely. So with, you know, I, I, I respect you a lot, Forrest, and I think I've gotten to know you, you a lot more today. There's one Thank last you. thing we I think we have to cover before the before we end this podcast, and that's twenty twenty. Let's season, let's do it. Let's do it. So twenty twenty season. I, I understand uh, you did a night at Pirates Cave, which I actually showed up not knowing you were there and still saw you. <laughs> uh, yes. And then you did the the uh, haunted car wash in Huntington Beach. Yes. So did you do anything else besides those two? Uh, those were the only two I did. Right. Uh, just because I. This season, the 2020 season, obviously was like a very, obviously a weird situation because I wasn't at Scary Farm. Mm -hmm. So I made it a point to want to put myself out there and saying, you know what, if I can scare and have fun and still do what I need to and be safe, then I'm going to do it. So I put it out there that I was looking for haunts to scare at because especially for some haunt monsters, they just travel. They just, they'll hop on a plane and go fly to a, you know, a completely different state and go scare. Right. And I kind of wanted to do that for this season because I felt that this was going to be something that I was never going to be able to do again. So um, I've known Jacob for years um, to the point where they would come around and be like, Hey, Hey, cardiac, you're amazing. I'm like, Oh my God, thank you. And just like keep scaring um, to the point when, not realizing that they run and actually funny enough, Jacob and I went to the same high school, obviously different points of time. Cause I graduated about 10 years ago, right. but now it's, but to be able to have someone, you know, like that, who like, I want, can you come scare at my haunt? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I would love to come scare at your haunt. I would love to be able to come and support you. What was really fun was that haunted car wash. So, Pirates Cave gets booked, done, and we had already filmed. That we was, were already by the planning way, on. Let's give them credit. That was a fantastic production this year. I loved it. It, it was, was so beautiful. amazing. That was yeah, like theme I, park quality stuff right there. Yeah. Oh, there were people from theme parks who yeah. went to go see them. Yeah. So obviously, and because it was the perfect opportunity to do so. Yeah. So I love that Home Haunts got the spotlight for this year. I'm yes. so glad that they did because they absolutely deserve it. Mm -hmm. And they need to be, honestly, I think that because now that Halloween and traveling to different haunts is now becoming part of people's years right. that I think that they, that home haunt should be more open to that and mm -hmm. putting it out there. And so we did, we, we, we went to a few of them, but pirates cave was one that I was asked to go scare at and haunted car wash. I just happened to know the people who were a part of it because right. they were all knots. So I was, I threw it out there saying, Hey, I would love to come in and just scare only thinking it would be for a night. I ended up scaring there for three nights, nice. I think three or four nights because I wanted to just go and have fun and be, and have a good time. And I had such a fun time because I got yeah. to scare with people because all of, most of them were from ghost town, but like, to scare with those people was so much fun because now I got to actually like scare with those people that I hung out with yeah. and what an experience. And I actually got to do two different looks, right. same mask, same hair, but just the, the, the bottom parts neck down was different. Right. So for the first night I did actually for two of the nights, I did <clears throat> like a, almost like a schoolboy kind of look. So I had like I a one. tan blazer, white um, like thing button up and I had a, that because I, I wanted to so I did that and then because I did Pirates Cave one night went back to uh, Huntington Beach the next night right. I just kept the the long sleeve shirt and the shorts that I wore from Pirates Cave and wore that over to <laughs> Huntington Beach which was really fun because I got to then do keep the look and have fun and try something a little different so that was pretty fun for me and to do something very different like a car wash was super fun so i'm yeah. so glad that i got to do it and got to scare with people that i loved being around we and lick windows that was the other thing too <laughs> we, we got to talk about some stories about that too because i i showed up with uh, my my but my buddy rob and his wife and i think mm -hmm. that was we got greeted by you right when we enter in i i, I have mm -hmm. to say another well put together experience something that you would never thought in a million years would work and it worked mm -hmm. so beautifully 
Um, yeah. Such a fun experience. On top of that, you got your car wash, so that was cool. So um, Right? <laughs> but I think the funniest we had, I think that was probably the most fun we had at a haunt this year, mainly because of your intro, bringing us in and introducing us to this, uh, this kind of world we were going in. And mm -hmm. I just remember the funniest thing is you were you were chatting with us and you knew uh, you knew who we were. You knew who mm -hmm. uh, the people I was talking about were. And uh, the funniest thing I remember is uh, my buddy Rob's wife secretly trying to lock the door on you. And then you told her she messed <laughs> up and reached over and unlocked the door and opened it. Yep. I, I was <laughs> so dying over that. Man. I loved so looking fun. through the videos and like watching it and because it was just so fun to like watch what I was doing. Because right. like, you know, sometimes when you are scary, you forget about you just get lost in the experience. So it was fun. Cause like, I remember doing that, mm -hmm. but to like see it from someone else's perspective was super fun. And that was always a shtick that I loved doing. If your window was down and I tried to open your door, I'm like, Oh, you messed up. And I just <laughs> open and just like get in and be like, hi. Um, but that was fun. And then like one of the other tactics I loved doing is when they went and rolled down the windows, the car was locked. I would immediately start licking the window because I was like, why not? <laughs> so, and funny enough, I actually learned that from someone who is in another immersive group up in LA uh, called Creep, or their the main company is called GFI. Right. Uh, but there was a moment where it was called House. The show was called House of Creep, right. and one of the experiences because it's free roaming was this one guy who had like an '80s like porn stash who had like cut this actress's hair like a little piece of it stick in his mouth and he lick against the windows and it was just something I remembered. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start licking windows. No matter how dirty those windows were, my <laughs> tongue was on the window. I would spit out the dirt, like yeah. turn around, spit it at the wall. But like that would freak people out. There is a window in between me and the person. I was still scaring them because I was licking a damn window. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Dude, the whole, the whole talent there that night when we went was just on the top of the game i think even at mm -hmm. one point they pulled rob out of the car and made him clean his own windows which i thought was hilarious uh, See, so we actually funny enough uh that was one of the notes that some we got saying hey um can you not have people come out of the car the reason we're trying to do social distancing and you're not helping if you're having them come out of the car but i do think that like it was funny like certain moments you're like okay that's funny i yeah. love that <laughs> yeah no that was hilarious man they had rob get out and he started cleaning the window and they were getting mad at him they hired him <laughs> and then they fired him uh, another yep. awesome moment too was uh, when I got a chainsaw like that close to my face, which was yes, great. that was awesome. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think <laughs> at one point too, uh, we weren't expecting them to open the doors inside the car wash, and fortunately for neither us, neither do I. That freaks me out a little bit. Ooh. Yeah, fortunately that for scares us, me. <laughs> they did it right at the end when they were when they were blowing the car so uh -huh. there wasn't like because I, I saw some instances where they opened it during the actual wash so i was like oh man no your interior is messed up but then fortunately for us they didn't open it to like when they were throwing the the air on so if you if you look at rob's footage the sound is just messed up because the air is just going <laughs> straight into this mic i um, love it yeah, I, I, I am so glad that they came out and announced that they're going to be coming back next year. Um, mm -hmm. As early as the summer, they want to start uh, doing it, which I thought was great. Um, and I, I am so looking forward to doing that next year. Um, obviously, we don't know where 2020 is headed. 2021 is headed um, just yet. We're still very early mm -hmm. on to it. If it does, and I'm hoping it doesn't, crossing fingers, pray to God. Um, if it ends up becoming a 2020 situation would you return to the car wash or other places probably i would probably um there are a few places that i had reached out to they didn't get back to me which i was kind of sad about um right. one of them was actually 13 or 17th door okay i i just happened to know people who scare there and i really wanted to scare there for a night but because of the pandemic it's kind of hard to like do the laundry and keep careful of people which i totally understand and respect right. um but if that's the case i would do that but I have a theory. I was actually talking to a monster, another monster about this as to if this were to happen, which I think it might, because if, if all the vaccinations and everything are happening, my theory is that they are going to do haunts, but I think they're going to lower the ticket numbers. So they're going to have to lower capacity, which is, I totally would understand that right. lines would, you'd have to six feet 
social distance, mm -hmm. period. If you are a monster, you have to provide your vaccination card. That's what I think is what would happen. Like cut blank period. I would, because if they're predicting that the vaccines, especially for those of us who are under, who are, who are on the younger side, like, un, like le, younger than like 45, mm -hmm. you know, that might not happen till summer, which I totally understand. You know, we should, as, I feel like if you have at least the very first, very first shot and you know, you're, you're scheduled for the next one before you start, you should, you should be allowed to scare. That's what I think. I think that's a, that's a good idea. I completely agree. If we get a hot season, man. And I think I would yeah. I think one of two things needs to happen too in order to attend mm -hmm. this. You have to either get a COVID test that comes out negative or you have to be vaccinated in order to I think just to buy tickets. That's my opinion. I could see that. And that and way you have to take safe... a picture providing your card. Yeah. that way it's safe mm -hmm. for everyone, both monsters mm -hmm. and and uh the the people who are buying tickets to go to the event see i also think too that the haunt pass will probably if it comes back i don't think haunt pass is coming back yeah and that's the sec sucky part too because that's i think that's what made 2019 for me was just but i i would understand why it wouldn't come back obviously but mm -hmm. yeah um, much like as this recording today, disney's yes <laughs> yeah disneyland took away and then so many people are pissed off about that and it's like I'm what do you pissed. expect i'm pissed too but it's like I can't really do anything about it. It's not, it's if not you think about the nature of business though, but if you think about the nature of business, especially considering that like I have a, I have a business, so I have to think about these things. Right. They lost a crap ton of money. They have to recoup that, all that money back. Right. And who spends the less, who spends the less amount of money at their theme parks, pass holders. Yeah. So, and especially because the payment plans really are the reason why they were like, just it was overcrowded all the time yeah made it hard for them to do certain things so honestly for a lot of us we were kind of like oh, thank god but it does suck like i know people who have passes and they're not going to be able to use them because they don't exist anymore yeah. so like i told like i see both sides of it but at the same time i'm more leaning to the cast member and company side because it allows us to recoup our money back so we can do more things and right. be able to get that money back and be able to do cooler things you know so it time will tell time will tell i will say this uh pass or pass or no pass i will buy a ticket to opening day just to go see avengers campus because i am so ready for that mm -hmm. so i'm ready that. i can't i can't i can't wait for it it'll be super exciting it's gonna be great and mm -hmm. you know i'm ready for it but forrest man it has been a absolute pleasure to talk to you today um, thank you we've had so much fun i think just hearing your stories um it, it's just been great to know you even more and i can't wait mm -hmm. to uh hopefully again work with you in the future man because yeah i had a great time doing this today yeah thank you i had such a great time um obviously so for anybody who is a an avid haunt fan you know do us a favor and support the people who who do this for a living yes. support the small businesses who are yes. within the horror community because those are super important to keeping our communities alive our home mm -hmm. haunts alive those are very important so definitely please do that find out who those people are and support them i just found a new one called um radley relics mm -hmm. i found him on TikTok. he does like little miniature like haunt stuff he had his own haunt so um it's people like that that we we need to keep supporting even right. if the bigger haunts come back another one i want to shout out is our boy josue actually selling cookies the spooky yeah. snacks um, yes i want to buy a couple i'm like yes. super pumped to buy some i'll tell you this i i uh, i bought um some when he first opened up uh some chocolate mm -hmm. chip so good so delicious uh and they're packaged Excited. beautiful they look they look professional it looks great package they give you a little thank you card they put a little nice uh, ribbon bow on it um <laughs> they're gonna be announcing well, they probably already announced uh they're doing of course valentine's day ones uh they're gonna be showing mm. all the designs so obviously yes. they just had a, uh, a kid little miles go support mm. them obviously as well uh that's still gonna be the one i'm shouting out right here because yeah uh, they're trying to provide for miles and and, and the rest of their family so Buy some cookies Absolutely. for them and definitely yeah. love it. cookies are I mean, who mm -hmm. doesn't love cookies? Cookies are good. I love cookies. They're love so them. good. <laughs> yes. Give me some cookies and some milk and I'm satisfied. Yes, you know? I feel that. I'm on that same boat. I feel you. 
Forrest, I promise you this. I'm going to make you a promise this right now. After this pandemic uh, gets a little bit better, we're going to go out and have a nice uh, drink or go for some dinner or something just to hang out, man. I mean, or I can challenge you to the challenge and see if you make it out alive. That'll be something Ooh. we'll have to discuss. You just put me on the spot right <laughs> now, man. Okay. Ooh. You know what? I, we'll I, I, I'm up for it, man. I really would be, honestly. Actually, I'll even do this too because you don't even know I'm going to say this. If you have, uh, see, the first, let's say, three people who listen to this podcast and get to this part, first three people who mention that you listened to this podcast and shout it out, I will give you a free opportunity to experience the challenge. Damn. All right. You heard it here from Forrest, man. First three people, mm -hmm. if you've gotten this far, you gotta shout us out, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta bring it up. You gotta DM me, talk about it. I'm for it, man. I'm ready. Um, I'm, yep. All right, man. Without further ado, uh, the only thing I wish left is you stay safe out there and stay spooky. Stay spooky. There you go. Uh, <laughs> if you guys enjoyed today's podcast, of course, leave a like and a comment below. Uh, show for us some love. He's a great guy. Great person. Um, and also go check out his podcast out right now. Links in the description below. Also his YouTube channel and his social media will be there. Um, but definitely support Forrest and everything he does. He's a, he's a very genuine person and he is just wants what's best for the haunt community. And I respect the hell out of that. So, um, thank you. Definitely check him out. And without further ado, guys, uh, my name's Anthony from the Knights of Horror. You just watched an episode of the Miles Horror or heard an episode of the Miles Horror podcast. And we will see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs>